Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Mac. I'm Somalia here in Philadelphia and I'm here to talk to you about some wine. Uh, today I want to talk about something that's a little different. Uh, this is the uh, Pheasant's Tears uh, Arcatzatelli. Arcatzatelli. Um, now this is a Georgian wine, not, not from the state, U.S. state Georgia, the, the actual uh, country, uh, Georgia. Uh, and it's got some interesting things. Uh, I know I've uh, seen some people talking about uh, being interested in natural wines. Uh, so these are things that are done uh, that are very organic and they're not filtered and, you know, they're aged in old ways. And uh, this would be a wine that would certainly fit in that category and probably really, in my opinion, anyway, one of the better uh, examples of this. Uh, and so, as a general rule, you don't see a ton of wine coming out of Georgia. And in my experience, I, there hasn't really been a Georgian wine I've had yet that didn't amaze me. I just, uh, there's something about that country and the winemaking there that's really interesting to me. And I think a big part of that is because there's not really wine that's made generally for a Western palate. So this tends to be wine that is a little different than sort of what you're used to. Now, this being a natural wine and unfilled, you can see it's like super cloudy, right? You can't see through that at all. And, uh, you know, so, you know, maybe a little uh, scary looking to, to people when they first see it. Uh, this particular wine is an orange wine. So red wine, when you squeeze the grapes originally, the, the juice that comes out is clear. And what turns it red is that it gets contact with the skin and the pigments in the skin, you know, bleed out into the, the liquid. So an orange wine is a white wine grape that has skin contact. So it's made kind of the same way a red wine is. It's just that because the the grapes aren't as red, the, it turns out orange instead of a, a red color. It's similar to a rosé, which might be made by not leaving the wine on in contact with, this, with the grapes' uh, skins for as long. So you don't get as much red color out of the skins. Another interesting thing about this wine is that it's made using uh, amphora, these these giant clay pots that they bury into the ground and they, they, they age the wine in, in fermented wine inside of these, these giant clay pots with wild yeasts and those sorts of things. And you get these like really beautiful um, nutty and, and honey notes. Uh, this one in particular has a ton of walnut on it. And it's definitely a very different sort of a style of wine. It's very acidic, it's very uh, grippy. So, uh, you know, it, you drink it, it, it's an immediate sort of shock. And it's weird having a white wine that has sort of a, this much of a tannic sort of a value to it. Almost like a, like more like tea, I think, than a lot of wines, you know, that, that you know, I, think, right? I know that tea is sort of, uh, you know, a similar sort of a component, but this has that sort of like Earl Grey, like right there, right, right, right in the up front. And like a lot of these wines that use an older fermentation process, it changes every time you take a sip. And that's the fun thing about a wine like this is that it's not this is the kind of thing you know, just sit and drink. You want to like sit and really taste it. This is a fun thing to drink uh, around a fire at night, that kind of thing. Because every time you taste it, you're going to pick up maybe something a little bit new. I was saying walnuts earlier, but it's really almost like walnut. You know what I mean? Like, like walnut skin is like that papery thing that go around the nut. It has uh, sort of a walnut skin sort of a component to it. The fruits, uh, an interesting, like maybe like apricot and, and pear, like uh, definitely an actually mean pear. I know in the past I've said that, I can't remember the names of my fruits. Uh, but this definitely has like a pear sort of a component to it. Uh, the other thing I'd say with a wine like this is, is this designed to go with food, right? And, and it's really like, like, like wine from, from older, process. Things that generally aren't made for Western palates in general, I find, are, are just going to pair good with just about everything, right? I could see this being great. I, I think I would just like sit around with a loaf of bread and some butter and cheese and, and drink this down and it would be like an amazing time. And that's actually probably what I'm going to do with the rest of this bottle. Anyway, I, I think when we think about wine, we think about the noble grapes a lot because we live in a Western world. And for whatever reason, France decided what grapes we were going to drink back in the 1300s. And it's all, you know, I'm going to drink Merlot and Cab Sav and Pinot Noir and, uh, you know, these, you know, 
these grapes, you know, these, these noble grapes end up dominating a lot of the industry. But grapes like this one, this, uh, this Arcatatelli, uh, are still really interesting things. That's the light's not helping me at all. Are still really interesting things. And, you know, branching out and trying these other grapes uh, is a great way to sort of expand your palate and maybe discover some, some flavors that you might like. Uh, and, and something like this, especially if you like mead and you don't think you like wine, this is a wine you might want to try because I think it'll really kind of expand, expand your, uh, your view of what wine can be. Uh, and, you know, $20 a bottle or so, this is, uh, you know, a pretty decent buy. It's a real good bottle of wine. Anyway, I hope you give it a shot. Hope you enjoy your weekend, and I hope as you're enjoying your weekend that you enjoy some wine when you do. Have a good one.